Hey everybody, welcome again to the ggrated.net live show. We are live and this is episode 7 and it's Monday, March 21 and I'm your host, the Iceman and joining again with us is our co-host, Hydra. How are you doing? Hello everyone, yeah, doing good, ready for today's show. It's going to yeah. be a nice long one. Lots of great stuff today. Um, unfortunately today, Sebastian is out sick, so... Uh, we're going to be missing his presence, but filling in for him is uh, Minuteman Chobo Peon. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, All energized so and stuff, you know? Yeah. I mean, we appreciate <laughs> you filling in like this. This is uh, awesome to have you on here. It's kind of an urgency because uh, uh, Sebastian basically screamed too much for July Zerg, and now he's just lost his voice. So, yeah. Poor guy. He's done. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, if you guys don't know Chobo Peon... Um, he is actually the uh, author of the StarCraft Bible. Uh, you can check that out on YouTube. He does uh, lots of articles and writing, basically about anywhere you look online about StarCraft. And he's active daily um, in the show StarCraft Center. So you should know his work and be familiar with what he does. And we're happy to have him on today. So thanks for joining us, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you guys watch the GSL, the finals at oh, all? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had to. I couldn't resist it, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Um, I guess we will jump into that as our first topic. Mm -hmm. I actually am a bit lucky on that subject because um, usually the, the stream, the live stream, goes up here at around 9 a.m., 10 a.m. So, okay, people might be wondering what am I doing while well, I'm basically watching it while I'm at the office. But yeah, it's cool. And. Um, and it's a nice hour. I mean, I know that most of you guys have to wake up at like 4 a.m. and 5 a.m., right? To yeah, actually sit like down and watch it live. 5 a.m. Yeah, you're a lucky bastard. Yeah, yeah it is. to collect the vibe. <laughs> yeah, it is painful to actually get up at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. to sit down and watch that thing. So, yeah, I'm kind of lucky on that thing, on that <laughs> issue. Yeah. Um, anyways, this series was uh, a lot more one-sided than I expected it would be. Uh, we had OGS MC winning 4-1 against uh, July Zerg, the God of War, and um, I mean, after I was watching these videos, I kept hoping that July Zerg was going to start mounting a comeback, but MC was just perfect. I mean, there was no chinks in his armor whatsoever, and he just dismantled July Zerg. Uh, yeah. What's your guys' thoughts on the matches? Chobo, go for it. Well, I mean, personally, I was pretty much expecting this, and I think most people were, because MC is a monster. Yeah. Uh, and not just that he's a monster, but he's a monster who played July in the first round of uh, GSL this past season and just demolished him and made it look easy with all the force fields. And so people were expecting him to do it again, and he did because he's MC, and of course, and then he had the nice little celebration where they threw him up and down afterwards. Um, yeah. yeah, that was pretty MC's, cool. MC's the best player in the world right now, bar none. July is probably not even the best Zerg. Uh, so, I mean, July's great, don't get me wrong, and I love July, but he's just not at the MC's level right now. Um, so it wasn't really a huge surprise for me uh, to have it happen. What about you guys? Well, um, I really enjoyed the finals, but I always do. was a bit one-sided, yes. Um, actually, I was expecting more of July Zerg. Maybe I'm just a fanboy, um, but uh, I was really expecting him to actually at least take that thing as close as possible to that seventh match. Um, it didn't happen, unfortunately, and basically we just watched um, OGS MC dominating all those matches. As you can see on the stream, he had some huge force field play, brilliant micro, and, well, I would say that basically on the matches that he took, those four matches, he dominated with the force field play, just was brilliant, and the one that he actually didn't stood a chance in July, Zerg took that match for him, was with a big surprise attack with the drop, with the Hydralisks on his main base, an Overlord drop, something that you don't see that often, and I guess that thing that uh, just caught M MC by surprise. Uh, the rest of the matches, and you guys are taking a look here at game one, was basically him dominating with force fields. Notice there, as you can see, he's just containing all the movement from July Zerg on the ramp, keeping the force fields up. He, he used like six, seven force fields while he was destroying the main base, and basically kept splitting slowly those roach forces from July, and when he actually entered the base, he just had more than enough forces to finish off July. He didn't have what he takes. Um, and well, basically, that's kind of a summary of the whole series because um, 
MC just went for more of the same openings, more of the same strategies, and his macro and micro is just so awesome, so strong that, uh, well, Julizer just couldn't resist him. And like Chobo was mentioning, he already gave us a hint of what things uh, might be coming on this uh, on these finals when he played against July on the early stages of the GSL. Yeah, that's definitely a one-sided series more than I thought it would be, but I. Just the way MC plays, it's so powerful. I mean, just I mean, since we're on the topic of game one, not only notice was his there, micro no, and macro. I'm sorry. Notice there the zealots dancing. He even took his time to get the zealots dancing because he knew that July was just finished on that matchup. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's right. Um, not only is his micro and macro just phenomenal, but the mind game, the mind game that he played with uh, July Zerg in the uh, opening match was uh, yeah. where he went for that expansion build and he was uh, feigning yeah. that expansion and he canceled mm -hmm. it at, like the last minute. I mean, he delayed it for a long time and July Zerg finally thought, okay, I mean, he's going to be uh, expanding here. He's going to be going in a macro game and he canceled it uh, at like a later time than usual. I mean, he's yeah, just firing the... on all cylinders right now and he doesn't look like he's going to be stopped. And like Chobo said, he is obviously the best in the world. Yeah. Also, um, an interesting thing I like about MC is that uh, he actually tries to back up his play with the words, you know, just before the match. And you, you can see that on the on the opening scenes before the final started. He just said, I'm going to own him. Simple as that. And I'm hoping that uh, when I get three championships that GSL decides to give me a golden monitor or something because July <laughs> has a golden mouse. Yeah, I mean, the guy is, I don't know, confident, yes. Maybe cocky. He's arrogant. I guess. He's arrogant. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's be yeah, honest. But I, but I mean, but I, he can back up his arrogancy. You know, it's not like, for example, you have another guy that it's um, usually uh, classified or qualified as as an arrogant guy who is a genius. Was next genius before? Now he's an NSP genius. I mean, the guy shows off a lot, but he hasn't been putting much of a game lately. He basically is getting going on the GSL, but he still has the words to try to show, out, show off and be cocky. But I mean, MC is cocky, might be arrogant, but he actually pu puts up the show and takes the wins. So, I agree. Yeah. I mean, let me let me just state for the record, I love MC and I love yeah. his attitude, but he's definitely arrogant. And I mean, if you knew him from uh, Brood War, he would yeah, get Iron. he yeah. would get his ass kicked right after he like made a little celebration and was being arrogant still. So I mean, I think <laughs> I think it's mostly that he is making a concerted effort because he wants to play mind games. He wants to get the other guy off of his out of his comfort zone, make him play with emotion and stuff like that. Like his explanation for putting down the Nexus near July's uh, natural was that he wanted to make July off his game. Mm -hmm. So that's that's all I think. You know, maybe so maybe it's all very calculated and he's not who knows how he actually feels, but he's like this all the time, whether or not he's good. He could he could end up being terrible next season and he'll have the same exact attitude. I can almost promise you that. Yeah, but that's yeah, I mean awesome. that's the amazing thing about this. I think the mind games play so much more of a key role than people actually realize. People just think, oh it's I mean purely mechanics and skills, but no, I mean if you get your enemy on tilt or you're like get inside their head, you're just gonna be able to dismantle them in ways that they weren't prepared for, you know? Yeah. 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 Well also, I think I think mechanics part of mechanics is is being sound of mind. I think you have to be able to uh constantly keep a rhythm, do all the right things at all the right time. True. And if, uh -huh. if your opponent yeah. is poking and prodding you with these little provocations, all of a sudden you're thinking about that instead of the gateway you have to put down or the pool you have to put down and everything adds up and it becomes a snowball and all of a sudden you lost. 4-1 in the yeah. finals of the GSL. Yeah, that's a very good point. <laughs> that's well said. Yeah, but he is solid, and uh, you got to respect the guy. I mean, he's not one of those uh, players that actually decided to just change race because now Protoss is the way to go for some reason. Uh, um, he's playing Protoss since the early stages of StarCraft II. He just stuck up with it when it was hard, and now that it is a little bit... Well, let's call it not as hard as before. Um, he's still <laughs> owning everyone in dominating. So I think he's doing quite fine and uh, he deserves the, the success he's having, actually. I mean, oh, totally, the, only guy, yeah, the, the only guy that actually has um, two championships under his belt. Probably one day we're going to see him grabbing a third, I would say. At mm -hmm. least for now, he's one of the biggest powerhouses playing this game. Um, I'm assuming that on the next GSL and... It, it isn't that far away. I mean, one more month or so and you're going to have the next season. He's still going to be around and just dominating everyone. But uh, hopefully you're going to have someone to 
uh, stand up to him. I mean, we need some uh, big uh, rivals, we need some massive battles, and we need more champions and more new players to keep showing up on the tournament scene, on the pro scene at this level. Well, I, I don't think he's... I mean, first of all, I would be shocked if he didn't get a third championship at some point, but I don't think he's, like... Yeah in a long-term unbeatable. I mean, he's he was oh, yeah, great this yeah. season, and that's that's partly due to how amazing he is, partly due to the state of the game, although his PvP just ran through a lot of a lot no, of other is. guys. So, I mean, he's just he great. But I, I think that there's no reason to think that in a month and a half, oh, another pro can't get on a hot streak and just take him out. Oh, you know? just, so, who uh, knows? Oh, I think he just lagged out. Oh, wow. He's still there? Yeah, hey, there you go. Yeah, there we go. Sorry about that. It's all right. Hydra, you still there? Uh, Something terrible happened in Portugal. Yeah. <laughs> I think his uh, internet died there. Oh well. Well, you wanna you wanna move on, or you wanna wait for him? Um, yeah, I guess we can move on here since we basically covered everything there was about the finals. Here, let me hang up on him and just yeah. add him again. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Um. I guess our next topic will have to be the uh, GSL up and down matches for the March uh, series. Did you uh, get a chance to watch those, Chobo? I did, I did. Um, so I guess I'll just go over uh, the groups that we have listed here. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one is Group C, where uh, Virus and Fruit Dealer moved on. It's pretty see funny to see Fruit Dealer move on um, and then to see him perform like he did in the TSL. And then if you watch the GSTL to see that. Um, and then Ace, but of course, the reason he did, the reason everyone moved on is because it was also Ace, who everyone saw win the IEM championships and immediately thought was magically good, but in fact still was the guy who washed out in the first round of Kodai earlier in the season. So not a huge surprise there. What did you think of that group? Um, I was actually surprised that Fruit Dealer stayed. Um, yeah. I mean, his entire... What we've been seeing from him lately is just a complete roller coaster ride. I mean, you never know one day if this guy is going to be smashing through people or if he's going to just be getting dominated by whoever he's facing. So, I mean, that group I think was pretty volatile, and I was actually a little surprised just the way yeah, he's been mean, playing lately. I, I would agree with you, surprised about Fruit Dealer. I just, the biggest story for me was just Ace because after GSL said they would award a up and down spot to the IEM winner, uh -huh. I, yeah, yeah. I was kind of. Like, uh, I don't know if that's good, especially because all of the possible IEM winners at that point were were round one Code washouts. Uh -huh. And so I felt like there were probably more deserving players. So, I mean, and people kind of gave me a little bit of uh, shit for that. Um, and honestly, I mean, I, I wish Ace I wish Ace was better. It would make the IEM look better, the fact that he uh, the fact that he was able to win. It would make the foreigner scene yeah. look better. But what can you do? Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think of the next uh, group? Um, next group, uh, Group D. Yeah. Um, I am very happy about Xenio's performance. Um, I didn't think that he performed up to his standards when he was in the Code S, and then he got knocked down to the up and down matches, and I think that he very well deserves his place in the Code S. Um, Slayer's Boxer now in Code A. Can it be? I mean, <laughs> this is crazy. Shock, this is shocking shock. news to everybody, is it not? Yeah. Yeah, I guess um, it was, and um, I made some predictions last week about these groups, and I, well, I, I said that I was expecting Sung Ho uh, Killer to just not going to be able to um, handle the pressure against Xenio and Slayer's Boxer, and well, I was totally wrong, and I'm kind of shocked to see Slayer's Boxer on Code A. Um, trying to to see it on a positive side, you know what I mean? Maybe it's going to attract more people to see Koda in next season. I don't know. But yeah, it was a bit of a disappointment. I was I was expecting him to at least handle the pressure, stand there and uh, at least 
clinch his spot on Codes and stay on Codes would be good for next season as well. But, well, he's now on Code and Zinio um, and Killer took the spots there. Um, Zinio, for me, I was expecting him to actually stay in Codes. I actually... Um, enjoy watching him play Zerg. I think he's quite solid. And uh, I wasn't expecting anything from him, but that switch between Boxer and Killer kind of surprised me. Yeah. Definitely. Um, let's move on to the uh, next group. We have day three results. Um, we have in group E, uh, Alicia stays in, uh, advances to the Code S. Um, MVP, now in the Code A. And we have Genius <laughs> staying in the Code S. What are you guys' thoughts on this? Yeah. Chubble. I mean, I would say it was probably a surprise for everyone, but the fact is MVP deserves to be in Code A um, based on his play. He he was not as good as either of these two players on the on this day, at least. Uh, I don't yeah. know what you guys think. Yeah, I agree. Uh, he wasn't on his top game on that day. I'm not sure if he was feeling the pressure or if he was just realizing how low he was at that moment and that he was actually risking getting himself into Code A and, well, actually it ended up to happen. But... Um, he wasn't in, in his best performance there. Uh, I was a bit surprised by Alicia, though I heard Artosis talking about the guy. I've seen some matches from him previously. I was still not expecting him to be as solid as he was. He was able to just grab a spot on, on Code S and get promoted. And, uh, well, the other member of the group, Genius, what can I say? The guy that I kept saying that... Um, he keeps trash talking and loud mouthing and all of that, but uh, he still doesn't have the game to back it up. At least currently, he, I think he already had it in the past, but things are just slowly changing for him for the worse, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, group F, we see uh, Rain advancing the code S. Top stays in the code S, and OGS Hyperdub, poor guy, always getting the uh, death groups. It seems like now he has finally fallen to code A. Yeah, I mean. This guy, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's been in the Code S for every season we've had so far. So this will be the uh, next season mm -hmm. will be the first season he's not in the Code S. Yeah. Any um, uh, thoughts on this group, you guys? Yeah, just just would like to make a comment. Um, from this three players on this group, the one that I actually enjoy watching is uh, top, OGS top. I put up as well. Rain, I mean, I remember him on the finals, but it feels like a long, long time ago. And the game evolved and he actually didn't evolve, at least that's the feeling that I have. Uh, I was a bit surprised by his play style on this group F and I enjoy his matches. And well, he, he deserves, he just got the wins and advances to code S. But I still don't think much of him. We'll see if I change my mind on the next season. Uh, one detail that I would like to mention about this group is that it's an all Terran group. What this means is those players, they sit down and they know that they only need to play Terran. They don't need to check or prepare any openings against Zerg or Protoss or any specific strategies against Zerg or Protoss. They only need to focus on Terran. And um, my modest opinion is when a group is completely um, dominated by the same race, three Terrans, uh, at least on the practice that they do on the weeks before, they get... Um, an easier way of uh, uh, getting things sorted, getting everything tuned up. The problem is uh, that being the three of them Terran, obviously they're all doing the same. They're all tuning up their Terran. So we might end up having some really close matches and, well, sometimes some really close, uh, really long matches as well. Uh, on this situation, on this group, I guess that uh, the best players uh, took the, the spots on Code S. Hyperdub still needs to work a bit longer on his uh, play style and on his skill set, I guess. Yeah. All right, let's uh, move on to the last and final group here, day four. Uh, mm -hmm. We have group G and H. In uh, group G, we have Supernova advancing to Code S. We have yeah. Pult Prime staying in Code S. And the best FOU now in Code A. So uh, we have a lot of uh, FOU players dropping to Code A. Uh, oh, any uh, thoughts on these results, you guys? Chobo, go for it. Well, I got to admit that I don't remember these vividly, except to say that I think Supernova dropping was pretty... Oh, no, he didn't drop. My bad. No, yeah, advances. see, I don't even remember it very much. <laughs> Sorry, um, I, yeah, I think Supernova was a big uh, was a big favorite. I was going to say uh, if he had dropped, it would have been a big surprise. Um, but, yeah, why don't you guys talk about it since it's clearly out of my mind since the TSL has happened. Go for well, it. Well, um, the, 
the memories that I have from Super, Supernova, I recall these matches, but um, what I recall the most was him playing on the up and down matches on the finals against Lozira. And as you guys know, those finals were really, really close, really close. And Supernova showed us that he's a solid Terran player. I'm expecting good things from him now on Codes. Um, not saying that he's going to just go all the way to the top on the next season, but he might show a couple of tricks to some old veterans that we keep watching playing on Code S. He might bring some new fresh blood to Code S, and that's good. He appears to me as a very solid Terran player. Yeah. Uh, I think when we were making the predictions last week, this was the group we had the most difficulty with, seeing as how yeah. these yeah. players and, were relatively close in skill. And and, and notice of... once more, notice once more, uh, all Terran, Terran group. Yeah. Again, all Terran, Terran group. Um, and I at... mean, the... I'm sorry, just let me just finish this bit about the best for you. The guy who's been uh, um, around Codes for a while, probably one of the finest playing on for you, maybe with Linoc, at least I think there might be on the top of their game and uh, some of the finest members of for you, in my personal opinion. And, um, well, he just went down to Code, but if I'm uh, thinking about switching him with uh, OGS Supernova, I guess that it's a nice trade-off, you know, when I switch, just get him back on Code, let him practice some more, get Supernova on Code S, let's see how, how well he does against the top gamers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, moving on to Group H, we have uh, Losira moving to Code S. Uh, mm -hmm. Bon Bon Zenith, or Von Bons, uh, now yeah. in Code, which I think that's pretty much what everybody was expecting. And then we have Rainbow stays in Code S. Um, it's the Losira, other way around. I mean, look, this look. guy's been on a tear. He wins Code A. He gets in the up and down matches, beats his way into Code S, and then, yeah. spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't watched the GSTL, he goes for an all kill. So, I mean, this guy is basically on fire right now. Uh, what do you what do you feel? Chobo. Uh, I do think he's on fire. Um, I, I am going to have to spoil the GSTL a little more, though. He, <laughs> I mean, Lucira was up against... Either Lucira just got really, really incredibly good, or he was up against some kind of incompetent opponents. I mean, it was it was a little lopsided. I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to just watch it and see just how silly it got at some points. But I mean, I feel like I feel like there were some games where he he had lost, like game two specifically. He he would he should have lost, but nope. He, the, he just came back in, uh, the, the opponent handed him the game. Um, yeah, I think he's great. I think he, not only is he on a tear, I think his fan base is going up, uh, and I'm sure his paycheck's going to be going up soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you guys think? Um, well, um, I, I was commenting this with the Iceman before we started the stream. I can picture him sitting on the I Am house with I Am MVP on one side and Nasty on the other side, just doing his head in for him to do everything perfect, everything fine, just excellent and then playing against him until he just has everything on his build just to the last second everything just precise perfectly synchronized and i guess that the guy is just becoming one of the finest zergs playing this match currently um you will have to prove a lot now on the next code s season but um i think he has what it takes and um zerg always have um, a hard time at least on some matchups and i think he's one of those uh, few zergs that is actually countering that perspective countering that idea and allowing us to um, get new ideas, new ways of playing Zerg. So I do like the guy. Him, Nesty, and I am MVP. I mean, the three of them on a single team on Incredible Miracle is just awesome. And uh, I'm just sad that MVP went down to Code A or else you would have the three of them playing on Code S would be pretty huge. Yeah. Uh, just to expand a little bit on what Chobo was saying with the GSTL, I, uh, I actually did watch the first match since I don't have the ticket yet, but I was able to watch the first match, and uh, I believe he was playing Ice Cream. And, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he just opened up with some silly all-in rush or whatever, and it was just completely thwarted. So, I mean, yeah, I guess I didn't see the rest of the games, but if it goes like yeah, that... I it mean, stays like cream, that. <laughs> his, ice cream was, his ice cream was melting, and he was in a hurry, so he just made an all-in with a lot of SCVs, hoping that uh, that would be able to catch uh, Lozira by surprise, but... Lozero was making some spine crawlers on his uh, expo, if I'm not mistaken. And when he actually got there, well, he was just destroyed. Yeah, it was the... destruction. Yeah. All right, uh, I believe that wraps up the uh, GSTL. Yeah. Or the uh, up and down matches, I'm sorry. Um, next 
we're going to talk about the TSL3. I know everybody has been waiting for this. Um, too bad we don't have Sebastian here this week, because I know he had a, probably had a ton to say about this. Yeah, he's the biggest fan ever of the TSL. Yeah, he's been looking forward to this. So um, I'm just going to play the uh, opening clip from the GSTL, and then we'll get mm -hmm. into, um, get into the matches. And we had some huge matchups now for the round of 32. I mean, this tournament can only get bigger. Um, for whoever recalls the, the previous TSLs from uh, the Brood War days, it was one of the main references, at least on the foreign community, our community. And um, I don't think it's going to go any other way than bigger uh, now on StarCraft 2. Mm -hmm. It was huge. You guys, if you guys were watching the stream, there was something like, what, 40k people watching the stream? I think it was like up to like 43k at one point. Yeah. It was about it was 50. 50? Plus, oh, wow. It was about 50 plus that didn't include uh, Koreans. Yeah, because I know exactly. Gisado was uh, broadcasting the Koreans. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually wasn't a, very good though. Oh. Yeah, but that, but that's it's actually I still I still find it quite an interesting um an interesting idea and a, a nice um, decision by Gom TV to actually uh, uh, provide for the stream to show up in Korea and all of that. I mean, it's a way of connecting the communities. Mm -hmm. uh, just one small step for now. Maybe it will uh, transform and get into something else. I recall yesterday while well, I was watching the TSL commenting that. Who knows? Maybe just the best out of five between the TSL champion and the GSL champion. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would watch that. Um, uh, and, uh, you want Hydra. MC to play himself? <laughs> 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 well, you're just hoping for MC to just take the win on on the no, TSL. No, man, I'm knowing it's it's you're over. Call, sure. call it now, man. MC <laughs> is so good. You're hearing He's it so... first, Chobo P. I'm putting it out there. <laughs> uh, He's good. gonna. <laughs> He's got to be multi-boxing or something like that to play against himself. I mean, honestly, I would watch MC play, control two different people in two different races and see MC what happens. MC versus MC. I would watch it. I would pay for a season ticket Yo, for that. That's just me. Yeah, I, I would pay for that too. I've, have you seen those? Uh, I've seen those videos. Have you heard of that game Ikaruga? It was like that crazy uh, space shooter yeah. where you would flip yeah, the color yeah, of your yeah. plane from like white to black. I mean, yeah. I've seen some video on YouTube where this Asian guy is playing like two control arcade sticks and playing both planes at once. I mean, I can't even play this game myself. Whoa. But <laughs> yeah, but, there it is, man. don't want to imagine the insanity. My mind would just explode. But, uh, but let yeah. me roll this uh, intro video no, no. here real quick. I'll switch the sound over to the video and then we'll jump into the matches. All right. Yeah. Alright, here we go. First match of the day. Straylock against we had Tyler. Straylock versus Liquid Tyler. Yeah. Um, Liquid Tyler, defending champion from TSL2. And uh, what a better way than this, than to open up by a 2 0, just pure dominance in the way he played. Um, I think we can uh, best wrap up the first game as Glass Corral, seeing as how he basically corralled all <laughs> Straylock's units entirely into one force field clump and then just said bye-bye and destroyed them. <laughs> I guess you're right, yeah. yeah Chobo. I mean... Well, I think, first of all, I'm a big Tyler fan um, because, I mean, the TSLs, the TSLs and the WCGs were just the biggest thing in Foreign Brood War for a long time, so people who were successful in those mean a lot to me because I'm a big Brood War fan. And so to see Tyler again uh, playing at this level is amazing. Tyler's strength is in tournaments where it's not like an MLG where you go in and have to prepare for 50 opponents. It's where you have one opponent and you work out a build that's going to kill him. And Tyler works that out so well. It's what he did to Idra. It's what he did yeah. to yeah. Mondi, if I recall. Mm -hmm. And it's what he does for a living. It's the reason he is Tyler. And so to see him do it against Sherlock, really, after, after a pretty good StarCraft two career, but not as high as he was in Brood War, uh -huh. it really gives you confidence to see him do that. And as a fan, uh, I love it. I'm excited to see what he can do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've uh, watched his live stream quite a few times, and I know that uh, after a match, he'll open up Notepad and he'll write down comments like, uh, like anything that he made a mistake or something that has to watch out for. I mean, this guy is, this guy is someone who is methodical in what he does, as you were saying, Chobo, and just I mean. He showed this in the way he played. He just destroyed and dismantled the uh, Straylock with great use of force mm -hmm. fields. 
Uh, let me just um, add a comment. I'm pretty sure you guys noticed that. But once more, Tyler used the double forge all the way, and we gotta ne we need to see more of that. I mean, Protoss players should consider using that more often because he, he at least he knows how to use it properly because it just pays dividends. He just boosts his upgrades tremendously, and uh, when he makes the push, he just has the the upper hand. I mean, he has the, the upgrades, the required upgrades, and uh, his opponent just can't handle his pressure. So this double forge builds, I think we should start seeing more of this of to for um, Protoss players and Tyler is probably leading the way showing people how to do it eventually you're going to have more people uh, doing the same mm -hmm. yeah definitely uh game two again I mean that can be summarized as hero zealot because uh Tyler actually looked like he was a little bit behind there um was kind of worried but then all of a sudden uh you look over in the left part of the screen and he has one zealot out there just massacring uh, SCVs. I yeah, believe he had yeah. up to 20 or 23 or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, something like that. Uh, 23 or 22 and the, the the zealot was like something like Executor or I don't I don't recall exactly what was it, but I think the title was Executor and he was just basically executing everything on that mineral line. Yeah. <laughs> he, he basically just raised the mineral line by himself, so pretty impressive there. Also, uh, um, I'm not sure what Strelok was thinking on that moment. Maybe he was just focusing on something else, but he did left that zealot for a long, long time on that mineral line, just slicing and dicing everything. Yeah, he even called mules in down there too, which I mean, probably a little bit of a mistake. <laughs> uh, let's see. Any thoughts on the uh, match two, Chobo? Uh, no, I think you guys have said it all. There's a hero zealot, man. Yeah. Tyler rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ty is Tyler is still. Uh, actually, Tyler is still quite solid. I mean. Um, a long time since he was on Brood War, uh, one of the few that actually went to try his luck in Korea. But uh, the guy is still there pumping, and I'm pretty sure he's going to show us more uh, in the future, especially with the TSL um, now up and running. I think he's going to show us at least a couple of surprises here on the TSL. Um, I, I always enjoy him. I recall watching him play on the, um, on, back on the days of Brood War, but I didn't follow him that much. But yeah, he is one of the solid players playing StarCraft 2 currently. Yeah. Uh, Chobo, is it safe to say that uh, Tyler is your pick for the uh, TSL 3? or? Absolutely not. MC is my MC. pick for the TSL 3. MC? Ty MC. I love Tyler. He's going to be out next round, though. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Grandpa Toss is going to dominate MC, and you're going to have Grandpa Toss on the finals. Oh, well, I love oh, yeah. White Rod, too. Like, it's it's a damn shame that MC has to face all these players that yeah, I really like. Is. I think it White Rod is a great, a great guy, first of all, and a really good player. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with Tyler. I don't really know Thorzehan as a person. I've never spoken to him, but uh, he yeah. seems fine, and he's an awesome player. It took out Fruit Dealers, I'm sure we're about to talk about. Yeah. Um, it's too bad MC's path of destruction is going to wave through all these people. It's, it's yeah. a damn shame. It's unfortunate, but I mean... <laughs> It's going to create for it, some amazing matchups. It, I'm it's, sure. It's absolutely. also it's also a sign of how huge the brackets are. I mean, how big is the the lineup for the TSL? You just get White Ra um, on what right, round of sixteen is it? Yeah, it is. It is round of sixteen, and uh, it's still fairly early, a uh, fairly early stage. So it's a sign that uh, the field is really rich with also awesome players, and well, we're going to have a PVP. And uh, seeing White Wrath facing against a top Korean like MC, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, Just ready awesome. for it. I agree. All right, let's move into uh, match two. We have uh, Fnatic Sen versus Fnatic Phoenix. And um, so it's pretty much a blowout in favor of Sen. He wins 2-0, crushes one of his teammates, Phoenix. Uh, showing his dominance, I guess, still from uh, TSL2, huh? What do you guys think? Mm. Yeah, well, I, I made the classic mistake of I haven't really seen Sen play all that much lately, and I made the classic mistake of, well, if I haven't seen him, he must not be doing that incredibly well. Um, whereas it turns out actually Phoenix is kind of the one stagnating uh, and Sen's the one uh, doing well. Um, I mean, nothing much to say except for what you did just say. Sen is clearly the better player. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what he can do against Boxer. Um, I enjoyed the time he was in uh, Korea for for uh, the GSL Open tournaments. Yeah, and I hope, yeah. since he's so close, I hope he can go back. I mean, it's not it's not like a world-altering trip for him. So I, I don't see why in the future, if he if he keeps it up, why he shouldn't uh, why he shouldn't go back. Yeah, I would love to see yeah. him go back there as well. Yeah, um, a, a thing that is a shame is that you end up having uh, two Fnatic members 
duking it out on the, one of the first, on the early stages of the, the brackets and the tournament. So basically you just lose one of the members. I'm just looking at it on a perspective, on a managing perspective, being the, uh, taking care of the team. But yeah, um, Phoenix, as you guys know, is kind of on a slump. Uh, you remember his results now on the IEM in Hanover on the World Championships. I mean, he was really bad there, really bad results. Um, unfortunately, him and the QXC on that um, tournament, they weren't very well. And I guess that Phoenix is just continuing his slump and uh, hopefully he's going to uh, get out of it soon enough because uh, I do like his Terran playing, but uh, it's kind of fading away. He needs to step up his game or else soon enough, I guess the scene will just take care of him, uh, get him replaced by someone else. And I wouldn't like to see that happening, especially because he's one of the few South American players that actually have a bit of visibility. And uh, that would be nice to promote and uh, get more uh, uh, players playing on South America, I guess. Mm -hmm. I agree. And just to add on to what I said about, man, I hope Sen goes to Korea. Um, I actually interviewed Phoenix in like mid-January, and he mm -hmm. said his plan was to go to Korea over the summer for a GSL. Um, if he continues upon this course, I'm not sure how well that, that would go. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. Fnatic would even uh, be into that. So it's going to be interesting to see if he's able to turn it around before, I, you know, I don't know exactly when, June or something. Um, and see how how he can do that because that's going to have a big impact on his career. Going to Korea means yeah. you're more visible, mm -hmm. means teams want you more. Even if you only win a couple of games, all of a sudden you know you'll notice. Eg is asking uh, how much you how much to buy you out of a contract for. So it'll be pretty yeah. interesting to see uh, how he can do how he can do there for yeah. the sake of his career. I mean, going to Korea yeah. is not just like uh, something that you easily do. It's a commitment move. It's planning for the future. So I mean, I hopefully. I'm hoping that he's going to practice more if he makes to make that decision because, I mean, from what he displayed, as you said, Chobo, I mean, he's not in the state to be going over there right now. Yeah, yeah, things are not looking very good for him at the moment. All righty, let's move on to a uh, third match. Um, this was actually one of my favorite matches. Finally, we, th we see Thorzane showing his strength, and, I mean, what an awesome series this was. He 2 0 against was, yeah. Food Dealer. Um, this guy, does he have map hacks? I don't know. I mean, everybody's <laughs> Did he wondering. Scan every goddamn bane. This link? guy was, was yeah, scanning yeah. every hex on the map and just, I mean, making these baneling bombs look worthless. I mean, Fruit Dealer <laughs> was getting him here and there, but Thorzane was like map hacks enabled and then just started <laughs> taking him out. It was yeah, craziness. He kept, he kept scanning over and over exactly on the spots where the baneling mines were. And but he well, didn't I, scan anywhere else. It was so <laughs> crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess that fruit dealer was just on his side going, oh, man, look at this guy. Come on. I'm going to have to make more banelings. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the series were just, I mean, back and forth, back and forth. The thing that uh, really impressed me about Thor Zane's play was the first match, how just how methodical and patient he was. He would prod a little bit, move up, do some, inflict some important damage, and then he would pull back and regroup and make sure that his... Uh, stronghold and his buildings were safe and he just took the map and slowly constricted Fruit Dealer until he just ran out of uh, any steam and he just took him out. I mean, Thorzane just outplayed him on every every way possible. Uh, what do you guys think? you agree or...? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, one other interesting thing uh, to see was uh, someone was posting and translating the Korean netizen reactions to uh, the TSL as it happened. Mm -hmm. And for everything else, for like Boxer Night End, for every other uh, Korean match, they were like, well, there's a two second lag. This foreign player is terrible. This is bad. But for Thorzane, they were like, Thorzane actually played really well. His micro is pretty much impeccable and Fruit Dealer. Fruit Dealers, like you said before, is a roller coaster ride uh, as far as uh, his level. But I, you know, the Koreans, um, the begrudgingly gave uh, Thorzane some real props, and I think he deserves it. Like you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, yeah, his micro was real good. He did uh, some pretty amazing splits when he was running up against Banelings um, in game two. If Not I that he ever had to. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> scanning everywhere. I don't know what the heck in my packs, but. <laughs> Great series, nonetheless. I'm really happy to see Thorzane pull out the win, and uh, hopefully we'll see some more uh, strong play from him, and hopefully he'll be one of the underdogs that uh, ruins everybody's brackets. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to Game 4 here. Game 4, we have Slayer's Boxer winning overnight, and 3-1. A uh, little bit of... Um, I'm not sure I would say this, but it has to go down to the judges for this one, as we had a little disconnect issue. Yeah. Um, you guys want to make any comments on the series? 
Chobo, go first. Go. Uh, Boxer would have won that game, so I don't. And yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't think that was pretty much any. Uh, there was no. There was no room for controversy, especially because TSL. Uh, the way the way it works is, you know, these games were played previously, so TSL had already had an entire thesis ready of explanation. They had Morrow write out <laughs> sixty pages on why <laughs> Night End wasn't going to win that game. They had MC write out two sentences in classic MC style, just saying, "Nope, sorry." Um, and then they had Nazgul. I would say that actually. Everyone was complimenting Team Liquid on that, and kudos to them for instantly having an explanation. I, I would say there is yeah. no reason why a player in the same tournament should be judging another game, though. I think that's absolutely stupid. Yeah. Um. I whatever. I mean, you know, they they had to do what they have to do. There's there's only so many players qualified, but I don't see why Morrow or MC um should be judging another game in the tournament. Uh. But otherwise, it was great. Um. Boxer Boxer definitely would have won that game. What do you guys think? Yeah, I yeah, agree. Well, uh, I, I think I think he uh, he did. He had the right decision. And uh, if you guys were uh, uh, checking the stream while it was going live, you just had uh, a DJ Wheat intervening on the right moment. He just showed up on the stream saying, right. "Yeah, well, this the situation was like this." And yeah, yeah, it was something like that. He was just divine intervention, just saying, "No, this is gonna go this way because Boxer was way way ahead." And uh, no no argument here. In my opinion, I think it was pretty obvious. He was dominating that matchup. And um, I think that decision was the right one. With pro gamers involved in it or not, whoever was taking the decision, I think that decision was the correct one. Mm -hmm. I agree. And uh, yeah, I agree with what you said, uh, Chobo, about the ruling. I actually looked in on the thread and I mean, they handled it completely professionally. There was no, yeah, yeah. it was airtight the way they handled it. I mean, there's no, no way to refute what they, the reasoning was. And I mean, everything was well handled. So, I mean, that's the only thing that you would expect out of Team Liquid, right? I mean, just professional handling. And um, yeah, I think the TSL handled, so right? far has been, has had uh, probably the best production, maybe, maybe second best because GSL, but I mean, GSL has had it's more than its fair share of problems over uh, over the past six months that it's been going, and TSL oh, yeah. really hasn't. So I think I think TSL's production is top notch. And yeah. yeah, just to just to revisit that, when I say it's stupid, like when I say the fact that MC and Morrow were part of the decision, and I say that's stupid. I might be exaggerating a bit because, like you said, the decision was airtight. I just hope that in the future they take players who aren't competing in the same tournament to mm -hmm. judge another game because there's no there's no sport in the world that would ever you know if you watch basketball if the bulls had a foul they wouldn't go to the knicks and say what do you think yeah you know exactly I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean that's yeah. a very good point but i the way they've handled everything so far and then the production value and the quality just of the whole entire tournament has just been one of the best i've seen i mean yeah. everything has just been handled perfectly so i mean not much question there and uh hats off to uh, all the tl admins and staff for that so let's uh, move on. Let's move on. Let's go for the next one. Match five, day two. Um, we have OGS MC once again tearing his opponents apart, playing against <laughs> Sierra. Um, <laughs> OGS MC, what can we say, man? This guy is just beating people down with a Kratos death stick, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. C Sierra didn't stand a chance there. Just it was out of his league, out of his depth. I mean, MC was just cruising there, and. Um, I don't know, just it, it felt a bit like Ciara didn't belong there. And I do know that Ciara, Ciara is one of the fairly well-known members of the community, especially here on the EU side. But he wasn't on par with MC on that situation. Maybe on another matchup, on another day, he might be able to uh, stand up and fight. But on that matchup, he just got completely owned, let's say that. And uh, MC just cruised and said, I'm bored. I'm going to play Solitary or Minesweeper. This is boring me, you know? So, yeah, he just moved on and took the final victory. He just destroyed Ciara. He was probably, like, laddering in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, yeah. It's like, well, I'm just drop-kicking Ciara. I'll just do a few ladder matches. Well... <laughs> So Sierra didn't GG in game one, which kind of has uh, inflamed a little bit. But look, in Sierra's defense, like 
so Korean netizens were talking about this match and they were like, why did the Zerg even enter this tournament? And like, I know JP was like, they shouldn't even play this game. And, and uh, you Hydra just said, uh, you know, he shouldn't maybe even been there. But to be honest, to be perfectly fair, it's MC. I think as we go on in this tournament, we're going to see MC do that to a lot of really good players. Sierra's a good player. He does well in EU tournaments. Mm -hmm. He's not great. There was never a chance he was going to win the TSL. But he's a good player, and I think he he's he's within his depth for the most part uh, for the players in this tournament. He's just he's just not MC. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I mean it's, yeah. Diff it's a different caliber player. I mean, that's just yeah. the way it goes. But it's like that most of the time in the GSL. To be perfectly honest, yeah. I mean maybe not quite as big a <laughs> quite as big a uh, SmackDown, but MC still wins fairly convincingly to the point where you're like these guys aren't on the same level. So just. In defense of Sierra, even though he was uh, didn't GG and uh, didn't play uh, up to I don't even think his own level, he I, I understand why I would have been I would have been shaking in my boots, sweating if I was playing MC two. So yeah, no doubt. Yeah, well yeah. said. Uh, let's move on to match six. Here we have uh, Grandpa Protoss, Beast from the East. I'm talking about none other than White Ra, everybody's favorite Ukrainian Protoss, playing against We Loner Prime. Uh, another great series goes three games, and we see uh, Duck Load Ra coming back down one game, winning the last two sets. Uh, emotional series, great series. Uh, what do you think, Chobo? Um, I was surprised that it was 2-1. Um, coming into it, uh, seeing Loner's most recent games, I thought he would just be just kicked out unceremoniously. Um, not not that he, he he was pretty bad in uh, in Code A to be perfectly honest, um, yeah, and yeah. so I was expecting Grandpa Protoss to uh, to just walk into him, and he didn't. Loner Loner held his own, um, but in the end, it went as it went as pretty much as I expected uh, in the end. So I and I'm glad to see it because I'm a big White Raw fan, and Loner. Mm, whatever I, I could i could take him or leave him there i i i, I can't wait to uh till the china starts sending uh different players uh players i can really get behind because china has a really prestigious history in rts i mean warcraft yeah. 3 everyone knows but but in Bro uh, brood war as well they had players like uh pj and things like that so i can't wait till china sends more players because once they do i mean they're just getting started with starcraft 2 now once they do there's going to be more chinese flags on tournaments like this and i'm excited to see yeah. it Definitely. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah, one of the big key yeah. things was uh, last game, uh, Loner just let White Rod build up too much, and he got like the cl the critical mass of Colossi, and he was just destroying everything that Loner had. I mean, he ran him all the way back into his base. Um, we have one of the clips here playing on the stream, as you guys can see. But uh, Grandpa Toss just Ukrainian terror beasted at the last two matches. I was actually surprised he lost the first game. I thought it was going to be a two all, like you had mentioned, Chobo, but. Last two games, he made up for it, and he, he did some destruction. Any yeah. thoughts, Hydra? Um, I was just commenting that I, I, I couldn't agree more with Chobo about Loner Prime Wii or Wii Loner Prime. I mean, the guy was one of the first Chinese to actually get out and go to Korea to try his luck along with his uh, teammate Luffy. But um, he has been doing very well. I mean, he's struggling, and he was struggling for a long time on first on um, one of the first code asses. Or, um, sorry, one of the first GSLs. There wasn't even code ass back then, if I'm not mistaken. And then he just struggled on code A, and well, he hasn't showed us much of his reputation. I think he just got a bit of hype on him because he was one of the few Chinese players to actually come to Korea to play professionally and there, there isn't that many Chinese and we know how big they are on the RTS so we, I think we're just expecting way too much of him and like Chobo was mentioning we're probably going to see much better and solid players later on on future seasons of the GSL especially now with the game finally hitting in China I guess we're going to see an explosion of players trying their luck and we might find at least like a couple of really good ones who knows mm -hmm. Alrighty let's move on to the next match next we have Everybody's favorite Brotoss. We have Liquid Hawk <laughs> facing Miles Hasuas. Brotoss. <laughs> and uh, surprisingly, this series uh, goes to Hasuabs. I think many people are going to be shocked by these results, but we got to give credit where credit is due because Hasuabs played very well. Um, yeah, he did. Showed his great control. I believe he was previously a Warcraft 3 player, and yep. we saw with his Blink Micro, I mean, he just... He picked off stalkers and units where it counts, and this matchup is already volatile enough as is, so any mm -hmm. minute differences between um, armies or discrepancies, that's just going to show 
in the final clash, and that's what we saw uh, with the games between Hasuabs and Huck. Uh, yeah. What do you think, Hydra? Well, um, I followed and casted the match from Asu Hobbs like a week ago, five days ago, with him playing against TLO. And that was uh, following his results on the last Open. He got qualified for the TSL on the last TSL Open. And he was just very solid on, on all of those brackets to take the final victory and just grab that final spot on the TSL. And then I actually sat down to watch his replay and casted of him facing against TLO. And he was just impressive. Uh, there was moments he was microing and managing three fronts at the same time. Three, three front lines on three different locations, battling and sending high, high Templars. And he just had a huge micro and macro play there. I'm not sure if he's just on top of his game now, but he continued that level, that peak of performance when he was facing here against Tuck. And as you were commenting, I mean, um, PvP is fairly volatile kind of um, random things happen occasionally, but they're not actually random. It's just because someone was able to do something one, sec er, one second earlier than your opponent, and the, the, it just has a ripple effect, and when you get to the final of the game, it's just a huge tsunami just clashing on your opponent, just because you were able to do something faster, to micro more precisely, and well, the end result on this uh, matchup here was that Aswabs took the win. Huck played quite well, in my opinion. He wasn't like uh, subpar, but uh, Azu Hobbs was just more clean, more perfect on his mic ring, lots of blink stalker play, very good map control, and well, he took the final victory. Um, I think it was deserved. I do like Huck, by the way. I'm not one of the haters, not at all, not, not any close to, to that. I actually enjoy him playing a lot, but uh, on this situation, Azu Hobbs just um, dominated. And um, mm -hmm. From this stream, from this uh, match that you're showing now, I think this was game two, if I'm not mistaken. No, this is game three. The, uh, game three. The proxy. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah Huck, Huck just didn't notice. I, I guess that he wasn't uh, suspecting of anything and got a huge surprise inside his base. Mm -hmm. uh, so Hobbs just took his time to start warping in a bunch of units into his base on that little corner there. And voila, surprise, surprise, a bunch of zealots and stalkers poking at your mineral line, focusing fire on the, your buildings, and notice that Huck was just pulling all of his units close to the ramp and getting a sentry there. He was basically saying, you're not going to enter here, I'm going to use a force field. And Asuhov just saying, no worries, bro, I'm already in. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah. That was basically that. It was a well-played match. Do um, you have any thoughts on the uh, play of Hasuhov's Chobo? Yeah. Um, so first of all, I, I have to agree that uh, the victory was deserved, but I think Hydra might be giving PVP a little too much credit because he's possible. like, he's he's. <laughs> you're saying that um, like, oh well, it comes down to doing something a microsecond before. Well, it's not like it's not like Hasuab's got uh, you know an upgrade and then pushed at the right time. He proxy piloned uh, Huck and he won. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. and that's cool. I mean, that's deserved. Huck. Huck was playing sloppy to not get it, but proxy pylons and and things of that nature, man, PvP is rough. I I can I can sympathize and empathize it with is, Huck as far as uh, losing that game. I mean, it, it it's I, I maybe random is not the right word, but there's just so many things that can happen in that matchup uh -huh. that are that are difficult to prepare for. And if you mess up, man, you can you can it's pay. Over. With your life yeah, and yeah. and also i'm sure that in huck huck gg'd immediately and was like yeah I'm, I'm i'm dead i can't do anything i i can't imagine the the mood in the liquid house after uh, this day of tsl yeah. by the way that must have been uh, dreary <laughs> i i can imagine i can imagine mc sitting on his side just saying oh man come on yeah <laughs> I, I think the uh the differences uh, reflecting back to game one um hasu abs a number of times picked off stalkers and Huck was giving away like one or two free stalkers yeah. here and there, and that's yeah, yeah. that's where the differences are going to catch up in this mirror matchup specifically. Um, yeah. The importance of those units, it just starts stacking up after he starts giving away little free units here and there. So uh, it's just a difficult matchup, and he got the proxy pile in game three and ended it. That's just the way it rolls. But yeah, it's a damn shame too that Huck probably couldn't practice with MC the whole time because MC was practicing for July. MC yeah. did. Yeah. MC said that he yeah. didn't even practice for Sierra. Although that's the, lucky for him, it was the same <laughs> matchup. Huck didn't have the luxury of having MC to, as a practice partner. If he did, this definitely I think would have turned out uh, differently. So shame for him. Yeah, very yeah, good point. Possibly. Also, um. I think it was on game two on Shakura's plateau where um, 
Asu Hobbs had a bunch of stalkers on one of the Zalaga uh, watchtowers, and Huck was just sending a small uh, f a front party with like three or four stalkers, and all of them got intercepted with a blink and destroyed. Yeah, and that, that, just, that was game one. Yeah, and it just tipped the scale on on Asu Hobbs favor, I guess. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that that was why, uh, what I was trying to recollect now, and uh, recalling that moment where the Huck just lost several units there. Mm -hmm. All right, um, let's move on to uh, the final match of the day. Uh, big clash here, two Swedish powerhouses. We have Zerg player Miles Morrow uh, winning over um, companion uh, from Sweden, Liquid Jinro. And as Chobo was saying earlier, this is looking like a dark day for the uh, Liquid team house. What do you think, Chobo? Uh, hello? I guess his mic went down. Uh, Roger, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Why don't you okay, okay I'm here. But it was lagging, lagging a little bit. But yeah, I can hear yeah. you just fine now. Go for it. Oh, okay. Um, as I was saying earlier, we have uh, Miles Morrow here beating out Jinro. And uh, Chobo was telling us earlier it's it's going to be a dark day in the, uh, the Liquid Team community. Well, what's your feelings, Chobo, on this match? Uh, Morrow definitely deserved this win, and Banelings are good, man. Good God, Jinro! <laughs> yeah. I don't think Jinro really grasped uh, quite how good they were. He seemed he seemed complacent in his wall. He thought he thought there's no way Morrow can bust this and and do significant damage. But every time Morrow would come in with you know ten Banelings and be like, ah ha ha ha, wrong, and he would just come in and then. All of a sudden, Jinra would be at a loss for what to do. And it happened several times. Even in a single game, it would happen several times. It felt like every single time Morrow would come with the bus, Jinra was surprised that Morrow had the guts to do it. Kudos to Morrow for being uh, super aggressive about it. Morrow is a man who can play many styles. He can play macro, He can, and now we know he can play uh, super aggressive. Although I guess we knew that from uh, August when he was re five racks reaper rushing uh, with Tarrant. But I guess it's a little different. <laughs> Um, but yeah, man, Morrow, Morrow earned it. So kudos to him, and um, I I look forward to his uh, future matches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I took a page I... uh, out of July Zerg's book, it seems, with exactly. uh, all the baneling aggression exactly. that he was throwing. But it seems to be the uh, way to dismantle Terran right now. Uh, what do you think, Hydra? Yeah, I was uh, when I was watching these matchups, I was uh, thinking about. I think it was July Zerg on the semifinals. He went for baneling bus as well and worked just awesome. And uh, on this situation, well, at least on one of the matches, Moro just made General pay for being greedy. General just went something like uh, command center first. And um, he just stretched way. I think he was trusting on the fact that the map was quite big. I think it was on Taldorim Altar. The map is quite big, and he just thought, oh, long rush distance, I'm going to have time. I'm just going to stretch myself, grab that uh, expo, and start benefiting from it. And Moro just got there and said, oh, you went for command center first? Okay. He just massed up a bunch of uh, Zerglings and then Banelings, and you did huge Baneling bust. And notice that his busts were against barracks, not against supply depots, so it requires a lot of Banelings, but he just smashed into there. And Jinro even trying to save his barracks, lifting them up, all on fire, and a million Zerglings roaming around Jinro's base, just chewing all of the Marines and all of the SCVs. I guess that Moro just tried to punish, punish Jinro every time he tried to abuse his position, tried to just... Uh, go and be a little bit greedier and well Morrow was on top of the game and just said no you're not going to get this I'm going to baneling bust you and he did it several times with very good results mm -hmm. so it was a quite an impressive series by the way I really enjoyed the series yeah it was a good series and well deserved win tomorrow um, hopefully we'll see uh, more impressive strength and uh, aggressive play from him as he goes on through the brackets yeah yeah all right uh, I think that about rounds it up for the first weekend of the TSL 3 so let's move into the GSTL. Um, actually, didn't get to watch uh, hardly any of these matches, so I'm going to be relying on uh, Chobo, Peon, and Hydra here. But um, first, we have the uh, GSTL uh, matches between IM, uh, and they were facing uh, Xenix Clan. Um, yeah. We hear, uh, here we saw Losira taking an all kill. Uh, we discussed this a little bit earlier. Uh, Looked like the matches were a bit cheesy, uh, a bit lopsided in one side in favor of La Sierra, but, uh, I mean, still an all-kill nonetheless. Uh, Chobo, yeah. since you watch most of these matches, I'll let you start off. Uh, sure. I mean, 
Lucira is better than Xenex. That's uh, that's what it comes down to. I don't even know yeah. that these are all these matches were specifically cheesy, but they were lackluster. There were there was some lacking play. Although I watched the second half of the uh, of the second match and I thought that as well. I thought, man, these these guys just aren't playing up to what we're used to seeing on GOM. I mean, maybe we're spoiled by the fact that we just saw the end of the GSL, so we saw the best players in the world go at it on a consistent oh. basis. Uh -huh. But man, I mean. Lucira, Lucira is better than uh, than these guys. I don't know how to put it more succinctly and concisely than that. Um, I <laughs> yeah. and I really am really looking forward to seeing him and Kodas. Um, I, I wonder, I wonder how he'll do against players that are actually, you know, of, of a level that he needs to be competing with. Uh, what do you guys think? Well, um, I, I still miss a lot of matches. I need, I need to watch all of them when I um, finish today's show. But I did watch that first game against Ice Cream from Lucira. And I mean, Ice Cream was just subpar. He got to a point where he just decided, okay, I'm going to do an all-in with all the SCVs. And uh, Los Zero was waiting for him, just building a, a spine crawlers when he actually got there with all his forces. Los Zero had more than enough. He was waiting for him, anticipating every move he did. Uh, so I guess he just got out outplayed there, and that showed through that matchup against Ice Cream, but then he just kind of reflected on Hack and Zero and Coca, and no one was able to uh, actually stand up to Lozira. It's also a sign of how far Lozira is getting into this game, you know? I I'm pretty sure it's also related with the, the members from his team helping him out and just evolving as a player. But uh, he is on an awesome environment, on one of the finest uh, pro team uh, and pro gaming houses in Korea. And that's starting to show, I guess, that he's just grasping all the information, grabbing everything he can and putting it out on his games. And he chose, I mean, an all kill. Last time we had an all kill, was it Squirtle or? Uh, yeah. It was Squirtle, yeah. Yeah, right, so, that uh, ended well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so pretty pretty impressive. I really liked Lozira. The guy's playing Zerg like a beast and hopefully we're gonna have more of this in the future. Would be nice. Um, on Xenex side, I mean, their team, it's kind of weak at the moment. They have a lot of Kode players, some players that are kind of um, uh, unexistent at the moment. Uh, people don't know them very well. So, uh, Or they start getting some nice players there to use as flagships as uh, to demonstrate Xenex power. Or uh, I'm assuming that one day we might have Xenex just uh, disbanding and their players going somewhere else. But just like... Oh, no, I, just, I just have a question with with the GSTL. I see these teams not putting their best players forward and true, just true. giving and just basically giving it away. I get the distinct feeling that Zenex really doesn't doesn't care about the GSTL because Impossible. where's Kyrix? You know, where's Beyond? Where's you know? Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Would yeah. be basically and, their their best players. Yeah. So I mean I I I I do like the GSDL. I think it provides great games. But for instance, we were just talking about Squirtle getting an all kill last season. Mm -hmm. Squirtle sucks. Squirtle's is not <laughs> Squirtle's didn't has not done as well since then. I mean, maybe sucks is the wrong word, but I'm just extremely disappointed in how well he's done. And I think that reflects on the fact that, man, what what's what's going on with the GSDL? I I, I don't I don't get it. Squirtle doesn't suck. I take it back before I get any flack for that. But, but yeah, just the way... First time on our show and you're already going to bring us down, man. Right. No, no, no. Squirtle doesn't <laughs> suck. But just in general, in general, the way these players, these way these teams have been putting forward players has just puzzled me. And the only explanation I can think of is these teams don't care that much about it. Last season, it was a bunch of Code superstars who then, you know, proceeded to not do that well in actual Code where players are really going after you. And so it, it makes you it makes you wonder about the GSCL. It's fun, but not that much substance. Yeah, it might be just a bit of a training ground or a proving ground, maybe perhaps because it seems that they put in a lot of their B stringers. Uh, I mean, it's right now. I mean, last season I loved it. I love the format. Don't get me wrong. It's I think it's one of the more exciting formats. Mm -hmm. um, it was the best. It was the best uh, tournament up to that point. I think the games yeah, were yeah. out of control, amazing. Yeah. But then you yeah. saw them play in another environment, and you were like, "Wait a minute." Yeah. You know, WTF is going on here. I mean, we saw Squirtle <laughs> take down MVP with Motherships, and then <laughs> yeah. he gets in some one-on-one <laughs> yeah. -on -one situations, and he's getting blasted. So it's like <laughs> conflicting yeah. issues well, here. But how I, much is the price on this one? Isn't like fifty thousand or uh, fifteen thousand pound uh, pounds? No dollars, isn't it? Something like that. 
I I don't know offhand. I think it is, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I I can check that. But um, build it's, the yeah, prize it's fifteen thousand U.S. dollars is the total yeah. prize pool. So you're not getting a whole lot of money because you're yeah, splitting well, that up amongst the team of yeah, not yeah, five. Yeah. It's not just the amount of people playing. I don't think it, it's like these teams have like twenty people on it. So yeah. it's a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, might be basically what uh, Iceman was just mentioning, and you as well, Chobo, maybe just basically a test ground, and you're just trying to give a bit of breathing space to players that usually don't have that much visibility, and hoping for one of them to be like uh, a huge player and just have uh, some awesome matchup, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I, for example, Ice Cream, I didn't recognize the guy before I watched him play today. Um, so um, maybe Xenex just uh, doesn't take care of the... Um, of their well doesn't take care doesn't care much about this event and is focusing on something else and just letting some of their uh, lower tiered players try their luck on this team event i guess yeah um let's move on to the uh next bracket of the gstl yeah the here team we is have more. uh for you against uh team scv life and uh we have tsl uh, taking a 4-2 over Foyu. Uh, Chobo, I guess I'll go back to you again since you probably uh, had some more exposure with these matches. So uh, what do you think of these results so far? Uh, well, so I'm only halfway through this. I, well, even less than that. I'm only halfway through game two. But I did happen to see Fruit Dealer get um, get beaten. Uh, it was it was a really close, cool match, actually. I, I, recommend, I recommend game one to everyone. Were you going to say something, Hydra? I was just saying it's against Twilight. Seriously, do I really need Twilight on StarCraft 2 as well? Come on. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, even worse than actually having Fruit Dealer losing, it's Twilight winning over him. It was a good game, oh, though. Yeah. Did you see it? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet, but I'm going to watch it. It's, it was actually it was an interesting game. Um, it really... Players had their mains destroyed. I mean, I'm spoiling it left and right for everyone, but too bad. Um, it was good. I recommend everyone watch it, even though you know who won. But from there, I have not seen all the results yet, but now I'm having it spoiled for me. And uh, Alive won three in a row against Twilight, Lenok, and the best. So for you putting out some players that, you know, at least you know, SC yeah. taking it over Alive, and then Puma taking it over SC. So like a... Like you said, TSL takes it four to two. Um, yeah, I mean, it's good to see players that I know. <laughs> I'm a bit shocked with the uh, Lenok and Best for You results here. I mean, I consider them to be relatively strong players. Um, mm -hmm. I would have think they would have been held up, be able to held up a little bit better than that. But uh, hats off to TSL, uh, I guess. Hydra, what do you think? <laughs> well, um, first of all, I just like to um, share a couple of details here. Alive was, before he was TSL Alive, he was Alive for you. So I'm pretty sure he's feeling happy at the moment. Um, he's just defeated three of the members of his former team. Uh, amongst them, it's the best for you and Linok for you, who you guys know are fairly well known. And also, I might be wrong, I need to make a bit of research, but uh, from what I checked on Team Liquid this afternoon, that Puma from TSL is the Puma from Brood War. He had the same name back then, if I'm not mistaken. I need to check it if it's the same Brood War Pro Gamer, which is good news. I didn't even knew he was um, playing on, uh, on Team SEV Live. Or maybe he was just training and getting ready to start showing up on live events. But um, yeah, I mean, from between these two teams, I would rather have TSL winning. I'm a bit disappointed that Fruit Dealer didn't took the win over the Twilight Gang, but I guess uh, better luck next time for me. And uh, I'm actually happy to see Alive, who was Alive for you to defeat his former team. He, he might be sending a message or his manager, the manager from Team For You, might be thinking about what he was thinking when he decided to just let the guy go. Uh, but yeah, well, Hey, was basically sleep. the result. Also, I want to see more of that Puma guy. I got to sit down and take a look at his face because I'm pretty sure it's the same guy from Brood War. Yeah, um, I'll have to sit down and take a look at these games as well since I uh, missed them. But yeah, that's the way it rolls. TSL taking the victory 4-2 over Foyu. Um, we can look at the uh, brackets that are coming up here. In the uh, next matches we're going to be seeing is Team OGS versus Slayers, and then we will have Prime.we facing Startail. Um, hopefully Squirtle is going to resurrect and uh, morph into the next level of a Pokemon, and we're going to see more motherships because that's what I'm here for. Because I was disappointed by his play earlier, and uh, I want to see action now. What do you guys you think? Guys, you guys think it's going to be IM against Startail again in the finals? Possibility, right? 
Uh, I think OGS is going to advance um, out this time. Well, it depends on who they're going to put on that on that booth, right? I mean, they can just decide to leave the the big monsters sitting on the back. If I, OGS if OGS cares at all, they should advance. They have Nada, yeah. MC, Todd. They've there's more yeah, yeah. Code S players than you need to even stack a roster for a day. So I mean, yeah, that's yeah, that's true. If they show uh, interest, they should advance without yeah, a hitch. I'm looking. They have eight Code S players. You play. You don't play eight games in a day. They need to advance if they care at all. Yeah. Yeah. Another. Let me just let me just make another uh, comment here. I don't know if you guys noticed, but. Um, I was taking a look at Team Startel the other day. They were making that, um, I think it was, um, yeah, it was today on the team event. When they're making their uh, ceremonies and when they're all together, I see Torch there in the middle and I don't see Torch uh, anymore on the VT gaming team, on the roster. And uh, I actually didn't notice any announcement of Torch moving to Startail, but apparently he is there. At least he's practicing there, right? He wears a uniform, he shows up with, with all of them. Yeah. So unless I miss something, he is with Startail now. Uh, he's been playing with the Startail tag on his name, and yeah. uh, he's I mean, been on, wearing on the, the jersey on, too. So I'm... Yeah, on the, on the previous he GSTL, he was already there. He still does stuff with VT. I mean, he's he was never. I don't think he's like uh, you know a VT player in that you're gonna see him in any yeah, clan yeah. wars or whatever. But yeah. he does like uh, news stuff. He he's like a reporter for them, uh, uh, liaison for for Korea uh, and VT. So I think that's his role uh, over there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, real quick here, uh, brought up earlier a little bit that uh, GSTL might be a little bit of a testing ground. Um, that brings up the news that there are some new maps being introduced into the GSTL. Uh, again, I didn't see any of the matches, so I wasn't, uh, I didn't get to see any of these maps be tested out. But um, GOM TV has announced that they're going to be adding, I believe it's four new maps to the GSTL. We have Dual Sight, Terminus SE, Typhon Peaks, and Zelnaga Fortress. And I'll put those up on the stream. Uh, new maps, it's always a nice thing. Brings in bit of new fresh air into the game. Uh, I guess they're going to test them out here and we're going to see how they go. Uh, what do you guys, what are your feelings on these new maps? Have you even seen them? Well, I saw, um, I saw Zelnaga Fortress because that was played in uh, I Am Zenex um, and it was it was good, you know, it, it got the job done. I think, I mean, I'm going to need to see more of these maps to really make a definitive uh, uh, decision, but I think that GSL has a clear idea of what we want with maps now. They're not going to bring out any more crappy, you know, 64 by 64 two-player maps uh, <laughs> yeah. in the short term. So I think they know what we want. I think they know what's good for the game in general. Um, and so I'm excited to see these games played. I'm, I'm going to watch the rest of uh, FOU TSL mainly for the maps because now I know the results, but I'd like to see how Dual Sight plays. And I, I, I've played Typhon Peaks many times, but I'd still like to see how they play it. Uh-huh, right. I mean, the way that we're going to get new maps into the game is through the testing and through the tournament scene. So, I mean, this is the way to have it done in the tournament scene and get them exposed via, I mean, GSTL, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, I just need to watch the matches and see how they are. I can't make any judgment calls. But so far, we've been seeing the new maps, and they've been doing well. We yeah, well, um, well, I, I just took a sneak peek into this uh, maps. Uh, what can I say? Visually, the one that attracts me the most is Dual Sight because you have the lava and the, all of the green nature stuff on one side and the lava on the other side. Have you guys the seen Test Bug? Yeah, yeah, I already test bug. Yeah, it's looks the, uh, the idea, eerily similar, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the general idea it's quite similar. I'm assuming that they took the ideas from somewhere. Uh, I don't not not gonna go uh, that way. I guess I'm not sure exactly what they were thinking about when they're doing this dual site. I do know that the, the, these maps were made by the same guys they did the um, the previous ones that were uh, tried on the GSTL and were so successful. So I'm assuming these ones will be fairly balanced and uh, nice maps. Um, I would like to comment, well, this dual side is the one that appeals more to me, but I'd like to comment on the fact that we actually have a three-player map here with three spawning pools, and looks, at least the visual uh, looks of it, it's kind of similar to the Zelnaga Caverns, and it's called Zelnaga Fortress. I'm assuming that um, 
this might be a fairly balanced map, though I'm a bit afraid of all of these ledges that I can see here from the top, but I guess I'm going to have to sit down and look at it, see the, the real dimensions of the map. Maybe it's just huge and I'm not noticing it here on this uh, picture of the Zelnaga Fortress. Yeah, because if it isn't big, if it's small, I mean, it's going to have a lot of choke points and might not be the best thing for Zerg players, just from the top of my head. But yeah, if it, if it is pretty big, I'm assuming that there's big, large fields here. And uh, though he has plenty of ledges here to use and abuse, I mean, it's just part of the game. Get used to it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we end up having the one that looks more like washed out. It's the one from Blizzard, this Typhon Peaks. It's kind of brownish and blurry. Um, I don't know. Maybe the map is nice. I'm not going to uh, start um, criticizing anything before starting to uh, see some matchups being played here. Maybe it's a huge, awesome map, and we're going to have some epic battles here. So I'm all for blurry maps. It's fine. Maybe it's just <laughs> a picture. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah it's not too blurry in the in the real game. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The map is just like smudgy everywhere. It's like, what is this? Right. Yeah, it just it looks like muddy and dirty and just I don't know. I, I actually great. don't have a problem with that. I'm getting kind of tired of all these like metallic services. I want to see some uh, earthy environmental stuff. I yeah, agree. Man, yes, I guess. I guess. Yeah. So I mean, this is kind of nice. I guess. Well, we'll see. Gameplay yeah. is what's most important. Aesthetics can take a backseat, I guess. I, I don't know, man. I mean, if if you're seeing the same thing every time, it gets it gets boring. That's why I yeah. really like Tal Darum Alter. It's just jungle lush. It's it's really awesome. Not to mention the fact that it's just a cool map, but like and all the decorations, like mm -hmm. the neon in the middle. I think Tal Darum Alter is a really pretty map in addition to it being good. And I think that that contributes that contributes to the game. I mean. People want to like what they're looking at, not just, you know, have a completely cerebral experience. Yeah, so that's exactly. cool. I don't want to see space stations the entire time. I want to see a little bit of a green, earthy colors. Right. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll have to see how these matches turn out, um, see how the maps turn out. Hopefully they'll be refined, and we'll see what comes of those in the later uh, later games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're being tried out now on the GSTL, so I guess we're going to have a chance of uh, seeing some battles here, see if how balanced they are, or if the players already know something that um, no one else have noticed yet, and they're going to start abusing it on the map, just the small details. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, that about wraps it up for our show. Those are all the yeah. topics we have. Um, thanks, everybody, who did tune in. Um, I guess a couple of lag issues again today. I'm not sure what the deal is. I'm going to look into this, but... Uh, thanks a ton to Chobo Peon for being the Minuteman here and showing up. Yeah, um, thank you. Plenty of great opinions here. Hopefully we're not going to get blasted by any Squirtle fans. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But uh, thanks so much, Chobo Peon. And um, uh, if anybody is listening or is going to listen to the podcast later on, I, I know most of our viewers are podcast listeners, uh, make sure you check out the StarCraft Center um, that Chobo Peon is affiliated with uh, J.P. McDaniels, and they do that, is that, that daily, right, at 6 o'clock? Yeah, daily, 6 p.m. Eastern. I'm about to hop off and uh, and do that in a bit. So, yeah, tune in. It's, you can just uh, search it on Team Liquid or, or YouTube, and you'll you'll catch it. Yeah, so uh, any shout-outs you want to make, Chobo Peon? Nah, man, thanks, guys, for uh, for having me. I had fun. Yeah, shout-outs for you, Hydra. More than welcome, a pleasure. Any shout-outs for you, Hydra? For me, just to show up next Monday and let's do some more of this. I'm more than fine with it. Sounds good. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, we're going to bring you another great show next week. And if you have any questions or comments, send them to live show at ggrated.net. And uh, make sure to spread the word and check us out and keep following us. And thanks a lot and GG for now. See you guys. GG.